It's a beautiful day for a joust. Indeed. Sun's out. Got my lucky loincloth, cold Bud Light, comfy throne. I don't have the plague anymore. Look, it's the Bud Light. The genesis of the idea was uh, there would be a joust between the Bud Knight and the mountain. We pitched it to them and said, hey, obviously, the beginning part, we want to make sure is as authentic as possible to Dilly Dilly. So we need to work with you guys, with Wyden and, and Bud Light on that. This was really such a unique opportunity for us with the connection that we had inherently between the two medieval worlds. I mean, this made sense in a way nothing else really did. Dilly Dilly! You hold my beer. You hold my other beer. Whoops. <laughs> One more. All right, let's tap this keg. It was very clear from day one that there was going to be some sort of Game of Thrones spot uh, that invaded the Bud Light spot. Get it up, Peanut! The minute the lance hits Bud Light's shield, it went from the Dilly Dilly world into the Game of Thrones world. We wrote some scripts, some ideas, and then went to Anheuser-Busch and just said, hey, we've got this crazy idea that we want to kill the Bud Knight. Um, do you think this would be something you're interested in? He is a beloved character of ours, but it made sense within the script and within our medieval world for him, him to pass. So yeah, it's RIP for him. But for us, um, it was a really fun kind of meta uh, ending uh, to Bud Knight. You know, like I know some people were saying that it's like, oh, you know, like HBO probably tricked them into killing it. It's like, you know, it was always part of the script. And, and to be honest, like I think we would have been disappointed if we, you know, were part of some Game of Thrones, you know, um, partnership that like somebody didn't die. Even we were surprised by how consumers were so invested in this character. I mean, this is a character who doesn't have a face, whose voice we modulate. And, and we had thousands of people saying, what happened to the Bud Knight? We're so sad to have lost him. So that feels really incredible and uh, such a validation for us. I think you're always vaguely worried that we live in our advertising bubble. <laughs> and like, it's a huge deal to us and it goes out in the world and nobody, nobody cares. cares. We had two different directors. We had our director, Spencer Riviera, and then we had David Nutter, who directed the Red Wedding episode, one of the most iconic Game of Thrones episodes ever. And then from that point on, we decided, uh, let's just do two of everything across the board. And we ended up with two editors and two VFX companies, two um, sound designers. You know, I was actually pretty surprised, like how smooth it was with the two directors, two agencies, two clients. The reason we went with two of everything was because of, um, in service to being authentic to the Bud Light world and to the Game of Thrones world. It was very, very important to us that we brought the authenticity of Game of Thrones and I think it's there on the screen. <laughs> People want to hear that it was that there was like fights and um, and problems and backstabbing and crazy stuff. But to be honest, it was fairly civil, you know. At the end of the day, I think we all wanted the same thing. We all wanted a great spot that was cohesive. It was really good, and I think the the good part about it was it was very clearly delineated kind of whose responsibilities were what. It really was like one big happy family under one tent. I won't say there weren't any like tension moments because there definitely were, but, but it was good that we were all able to just really collaborate and partner up together. Making a Super Bowl spot under normal circumstances is its own set of challenges, but I would say with two sets of clients and two creative agencies, we really had our work cut out for us, but I was so thrilled with the result. I think we all really were. We felt extremely lucky that uh, 
there just was a great group of collaborators and uh, you know super talented people at the table producing the spot with us. It wasn't about you know being precious about our section or them being precious about their section. It was about just making it better and making it the best it could possibly be. And I think that's that's how we landed where we did with this great spot.